So this is going to be a fight to the death, a knife fight between the Zerg and the Protoss up here in the top left-hand corner in this brown. That is going to be Hero, the last of the surviving Zerg players, a ZVP specialist. If anybody can beat Shuttle, it is Hero. Down here in the purple yet again, it is going to be Shuttle. We are on Crossing Field, a.k.a. Neo Heartbreak Ridge. So, PVZ, what a way to end it. This is probably going to end with just uh, a bunch of Lings running by and killing the Protoss or Hydra Bust. I'm not going to lie. I feel like that's like at least over 50% of the games that I've seen are casted in the last month of PVZ. Almost all of them is just like Lings running in and winning the game or Hydra Bust. Yeah. So Crossing Field, very much um, like Heartbreak Ridge. The base configurations are very similar. Obviously, the corner bases up in the top left and the bottom right are backdoor expansions as opposed to expansions that you have to walk all the way around to, kind of like quasi-island bases. Um, in this case, they are backdoor expansions, so it's kind of like Heartbreak Ridge with a free backdoor expansion. You can kind of think about it in that way. It's it's not really exactly analogous, but you can still think of it that way. But oh, shuttle shuttle's going for a nexus first, guys. This is something that we actually see quite a bit on this map: is players going very very greedy on the economy because the rush distance is very very long. Um, unlike Heartbreak Ridge, you do have a very long rush distance, and since you can defend your main ramp, it's a very small choke. It's very easy to go for a little bit of a greedier backdoor expansion here. So that's something that we see very, very often on this map. Both players going very heavy into the economy um, early on, just to try to make sure they get a good lead on their opponent early on. There's still, um, there's still some interesting stuff that you can do on this map. We also see cheeses, things like proxies or very early pools, things like that to try to throw their opponent off guard, especially if they are the type of person that you know will go super greedy, you can definitely punish them for that. But this map overall has led to a lot of really wonky, very strange games overall, and I'm not sure why that is, because it still plays very normal. Like, you still want to get three bases and just get a big army so you can control the center of the map. But I guess because the number of ridges is so much um, less, there's only there's only really those two key ridges right in front of the naturals that really dictate the pace of the game. So if you can control one of those and somehow push up to the other one, like, you're fine. Like, that's, like, the end of the game. So this is why Mech is so strong in this army. This is why big Protoss armies are very strong in this map as well. And more mobile armies have a lot of trouble, despite the somewhat radial symmetry of the map, being able to run around the center of the map. So first couple lanes out, gonna try to pick off this probe. And behind this, the Protoss player shuttle here is just gonna be teching up trying to get whatever he needs. So this is a nice little win for the Zerg player, being able to push the probe out of the main base for a while. Even if he doesn't pick it off, it's very nice because it means that the probe is unlikely to ever get back into the main base, or even natural, without getting sniped. So it's very easy to actually uh, prevent any more information from coming to the Protoss. Very nice win there. So is going to be going into that fast Stargate, going to be going into the Corsairs, not surprising to see at all. And meanwhile, on hero side, it's going to be the fast lair. Again, very standard opening in PVZ. And it's all going to be about how we take these fourth bases. Both players are constantly thinking about how do we take these fourth bases, how do we prevent our opponent from taking fourth bases, etc., etc. And Pros can actually be a little bit greedy taking a third base here, just because of how easy it is to defend generally. You can take it on much smaller numbers of units than you would normally. But you do have to be a little bit careful for the potential Hydra bus that comes out afterwards. So it is going to be both Hydra and Spire coming out immediately at Lair. This is a bit surprising to see, but basically this forces the Protoss player into preparing for both. 
if you if the protest player isn't prepared for the mutilists, then you can just make uh, a dozen mutilists and just walk into their base and kill everything because you have a bunch of mutilists. You have usually a lot of scourge to follow up on that as well. Um, it could also just be that this faster hydralist didn't allow him to push away these. Of course, there's a little bit faster to prevent him from losing too many of these overlords. So. But very nice that he actually manages to save the first overlord with these corsairs, or uh, sorry, with these hydras. And behind this, uh, this has been a pretty overall nice little win for Hero. He's going to continue to saturate his bases and just get tons and tons of drones to follow up. Meanwhile, fast plus one coming out for our Protoss player, so we're probably definitely going to be able to see him go into that heavy zealot pressure. Can you guys hear barking in the background? If you can, please let me know in the chat. So, these uh, Corsairs now have to journey back home for fear of Scourge connecting with them. For fear of the Scourge running at them and suiciding, flying at them I guess, and suiciding and going crazy. Um, but I think they'll be fine. They're just going to hang out here over by Cannon in the main. Meanwhile, that 1DT is going to start pushing stuff in a natural way. Since there are no overlords over here, it's very possible to go ahead and take a very fast third. Because nothing can really stop you with the DT. It's, uh, it's really impossible until the overlord speed comes out. And behind this, you can just go for it very fast. High Templar to follow up and get the storm for any sort of scary time. Uh, scary time Hydra bus. So, overall, this has gone very, very well for Shuttle. He's been able to get up to three bases very easily. And meanwhile, Hero is still sitting back trying to just get tons and tons of economy out so he can start working on getting up to that large mid game army. He's probably going to be going up to six hatch over by that third base very soon just to try to get uh, some more economy going out. This couple of Scourge going to be able to scout out of this national, see exactly what's going on. Need to move. There we go. Don't want to get sniped for free. A couple of really fast lurkers coming out, but there's already a cannon out here. He's going to be able to pick off one of these. Oh, no, not quite. So this is going to be a little bit annoying and maybe prevent some pressure early on, but having the fast lurkers really doesn't matter too much if your opponent doesn't have a wall. So... A bit of a surprising strategy coming out from here, especially since so much of this map revolves around having map control, having large numbers of units. It's a bit surprising that Hero opted to go for the faster lurkers instead of just having a gigantic Hydra armor. And behind this, he still is on the lair. He's going very heavily into the lair. Still no Overlord speed, so a bit surprising to see that he is so focused on pouring all of his gas into Hydras and Lurkers instead of somewhere where it might be a little bit more useful. Their base gas is finally being taken along with this fourth base, so transitioning slowly into a larger economy. We'll see if he just goes into a large Hydra Lurker army. Maybe he's using these couple of Lurkers to contain before going into a huge Lurker Hydra army, but there are a ton of Corsairs on the map, and they're very, very strong against anything that might come out. This could be very difficult to defend with. He's got to make sure that he always has a lot of Hydras with his Overlords, because one sport in the Nat is not going to do. That is absolutely not going to save his Overlords from dying and there goes another overlord going to be going down at this point this is very difficult he's actually just going to make a ton of scourge and try to suicide onto these corsairs but there's such a large number of corsairs that i really don't think it's going to work all that well if you got a full surround you can maybe kill them all off but it takes a lot of gas and behind that you're really not spending a lot of your gas very well very good job picking off a lot of these units oh good job with the scourge points that actually picks off a lot more than it really should have. The Scourge is doing a really good job. And at this point, Shuttle is just waiting on his Observer. Finally gets an Observer out. He can start moving out and doing some damage. Fun fact, if you use an Observer plus a DT, you can get quite a bit done for free. Observer DTs are actually really, really strong. Not enough people use them. Something I used to do in StarCraft 2 quite a lot is Observer DT and uh, move out and snipe Creep Tumors. A really, really cool way to play. But in any case, 
Uh, looks like Hero is finally going into that hive, but he doesn't really have the army that he needs to properly threaten this third base while also uh, exerting that control he needs to protect this fourth base. This has been a very odd play from him, just going immediately into Ling Lurker and adding him to those defilers once he gets to Hive. Skipping out on the Hydras almost entirely, and I, I feel like that might have been a mistake because having the strong mid-game armies is what this map is all about, and not having that really just allows his opponent to do whatever. You don't want the Protoss to go up to four bases. You don't want him getting five bases. If the Protoss gets up to five bases, the game is pretty much lost, unless you can somehow lock them down and prevent them from ever moving out. Small Zelt run by going to try to come over here, but Hero is well prepared for this time. And we have a shuttle moving out right now. Does it have a Reaver or those High Templar? I think those are that's probably a High Templar job coming out. He's going to screen with the Corsairs and a bunch of his zealots just trying to prevent units from actually seeing this dropship. This is a very smart play so far. So far he's done a really good job of hiding this and keeping it out of the way. But he wants to make sure that he doesn't end up actually accidentally losing it to a pair of Scourge somewhere. A pair of Scourge do try to come in and kill it off, but not going to be able to. And this drop is going to get all the way into the natural. Is he going to be able to get some big damage? Hero knows it's coming, though. As long as he pulls drones and spreads them out decently, he'll be in an okay spot. Here come two Zealots. Here come the High Templar. Good storms on the ramp, but didn't actually kill any of those drones. Again, another failed storm. But these Zelts are doing quite a bit of damage nonetheless. Did manage to kill off a few units, but beautiful micro coming out from Hero. Again, picking off another one of those Corsairs. And as Corsair numbers get lower, the ability for Mutalist to actually get on the map and start doing some serious damage becomes more and more realistic. So this is a little bit dangerous for Shuttle, but Shuttle just has, he has so many Archons, so many units already. And another good storm coming down, going to do quite a bit of damage to that mineral line. This is a huge army coming out across from that from Shuttle. He's up by almost 30 supply, 40 supply even. This is so brutal right now coming out from Shuttle. But he does have to still be careful about losing that fourth base. You can tell he's playing very safe, making sure that he scouts along all the edges of the map, making sure that he doesn't lose all these bases for free. But a couple of leagues going to be able to come over here and start picking off cannons. It's going to be very obnoxious to deal with. Shuttle is going to have to pull back for now, make sure he doesn't lose anything. Lots of workers out now, finally. And now the Defilers are out as well, so the hero has his strong late game army, but he's so far behind in supply, he's lost a lot of his economy at this back base as well, and doesn't quite have the Scourge up here to deal with it. Never mind, as I say that, there are the Scourge going to be able to pick off the rest of these. Still one High Templar over here, but it doesn't have any mana, unfortunately. It doesn't look like hero actually knows that, so he panicked a little bit and didn't actually do it. Right now he's just going to have to pull back. A couple links coming over here. They could definitely side this High Templar. Good preemptive storm just to make sure he didn't lose that High Templar for free. This so one link is going to be able to pick off this High Templar. It's going to be very annoying. And small numbers of links are just insane when they have good upgrades. Right now that's actually only just one carapace. So I'm a little bit surprised that the links don't have more upgrades considering that was all the gas that... Hero spent. Looks like he's flooding a lot of gas. He's actually flooding a lot of money in general. Maybe threatening the uh, Muta switch at some point. Saying, you know, I could go into Mutas at any point in time. You have to be careful to shuttle. But shuttle is not having any of it. He is just microing back, doing a really good job of preventing these bases from actually going down. And behind this. Uh, Lots of damage being done to these units. Okay, very nice job. Going to be able to get a couple of units over there. But, oh my gosh, you're losing a couple of units for free. But he is going to be able to start holding this high ground ridge over here. And start holding this fifth base over here. But, I mean, allowing Protoss to get a fourth base is just terrifying. You can't let it happen because in a ZVP, once you get to that point, it's so hard to be cost efficient unless you have a gigantic wall of static defense of Sunkins that you can defend very, very well, as well as Lurkers. Because that's the only way to be cost efficient versus Protoss once they get that big, scary, late-game army. Even Ling Lurker Defiler is not cost efficient enough to actually be able to deal with it. So I'm a little bit worried about the potential, but it looks like a big Doom Drop going to be coming down the south side, but it might actually just barely get scouted out. 
by these by this big army and realizing that there are no units here uh shovel just pushes through he's gonna be able to kill off all these zerkers and that's a huge investment lost but hero is just gonna go for the counter drop he's gonna go for it yolo swag style a whole bunch of units pouring in from all different angles over here but one reaver in the main are you kidding me gonna be able to actually get picked off so that is nice but the storms so far have been very very good on top of all those units and i think shuttle might be able to clean that up without too many problems he's got a lot of zealots what are all these cannons doing in the main this is like whenever i play against <laughs> zerg and they just have random cannons in their main or whenever or i play against protoss rather eventually th these units will get cleaned up by hero but he's lost a lot in the process he committed very heavily to that drop for minimal uh, gain and now he's down by 50 supply almost 60 desperately trying to regain control of the middle of the map but he's lost so much he really needs to get another base up and with Protoss already on four bases it really hasn't phased shuttle at all shuttle still got plenty of money he can still build a lot of units he's actually leaving a ton of units in the main just in case there's another drop finally moving those out and now that the reaver's out it's pretty much impossible to break these bases with just link you really have to either go for some kind of crazy gigantic hydro drop on top of all of them or you have to work some sort of magic i mean i guess ultras could potentially break it but it's still very 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 difficult to do and this is a rough situation for for hero right now allowing his opponent to get that fourth base off may have been the nail in the coffin because he wasn't able to do enough damage with that wing drop not quite enough and there are more and more units coming out across the map almost entirely going into zealot archon storm now this is a very interesting style compared to the normal beefy dragoon styles but against this particular composition it's really not all that bad he knows he's way up in the supply he can just walk all over it and as the unit counts get lower and lower and lower for uh hero it becomes Zealot Archon becomes way more cost efficient and very strong, so not surprised that this is the choice for Shuttle. Shuttle is going to be able to start coming down here and start doing some damage to his opponent. Going to be able to pick off a couple of these lurkers going very slowly. This is so smart. Here comes a huge attack, going to bust through the rest of these lurkers and I'm still looking for the gigantic army of um, of Hero. Where is it? What is going on? Good Plague is going to be able to get on top of at least one of those Reavers. I take that back. It's a terrible Plague. And a couple of Lurkers down here are actually going to be able to hold this off for a little while. So this is a breath of fresh air for, uh, for Hero. But he still has to kill off the rest of these units. And there's still quite a bit coming out across the map. So this has been a difficult hold. Another good plague does come down on top of all those units, but Shuttle is just going to get it straight for this area over here. Trying to snipe the, the Observer, it just barely gets it, so no more Observers except for that one that just came in the back. So I guess this is uh, still anyone's game. Shuttle pushing in here right now. There's a lot of units waiting outside for Hero, but Hero is sitting in all of those storms. He can't quite get through these chokes because of the Reavers, because of all the storms. And Shuttle may have just done it, may have just completely broken through. More Lurkers coming out, but it doesn't even matter because this base is completely forfeit. Even a DT in the mix, being able to output a little bit more damage. Units flooding in from all angles from Hero, but I don't think he has enough to actually deal with this. The Archons are too strong. The one Reaver that is still there is still very strong, but the dropship does go down. Maybe it's uh, more likely to actually kill it off. There is no Observer over here, so eventually, over time, that Lurker will do some damage, but does get stormed and dies off very quickly. This is the third base, sorry, the fourth base of Hero going down, though, and that is a huge chunk of his economy and his production. That was four hatches that just went down. So, honestly, at this point, Shuttle could just pull back and target that fifth base. He'd be in a fantastic spot. Good Storm's going to be able to pick off the rest of those units. Good. Uh, another good play coming in from that Defiler over there. But the real problem is that without any units to actually kill off those units, like, it's just, it's not worth it. He's going to be able to run in here with these lanes, try to get a little bit more damage done, but 
The upgrade advantage is still not quite in his favor. He was never able to actually pull it forward. And despite all of these uh, really good plays, it just hasn't been enough to actually finish off all his army. Maybe made over made his uh, defilers just a little bit, and he doesn't have the economy to actually back it up. Shuttle actually just spending all of his gas immediately. Looks like he's just focusing very heavily on getting plenty of Templar. And this one Dragoon being stupid and blocking up the ramp, making it impossible for anybody to get down. Just like a Dragoon, man. That's how Dragoons always are. Does manage to kill off the Nidus Canal, though. So not, no more reinforcements to this base. This base will eventually go down over time. Here is going to try to expand up to the 12 o'clock base at some point, maybe? He's got to try for an expansion pretty soon. Again, he's still holding on to a lot of money. But these players have been holding on to a lot of money in general. Now it's shuttle with just a huge number of minerals. Again, that sort of play that he was doing in the previous game where he wasn't really ex mass expanding like he could have been. That he's just going to go for the big four, play, four base play and rely on his micro to win the game. So far, it's been really good, though. Another great plague is going to hit on top of all these units, but it just isn't enough. These units are trying to get down in here, but the plagues plus a couple of uh, units just haven't quite been enough. I think that's on top of all of them. Yeah, okay. It's so hard to tell when uh, the high templar move because they like kind of phase in and out. So this is... He's continuing to try to hold on here. He did rebuild the Nidus, so... There are still reinforcements coming down to this base, but again, I'm a little bit worried about Hero just holding on to all of his money like this. Drop ship, sorry, the shuttle is coming in for shuttle, but look at this Archon count. It is starting to get insane. Once the Archon count gets above four or five, it becomes so scary to deal with this Protoss, especially since your late game army is comprised mostly of Lings, and it's just not good enough. Here come the Reavers, gonna be able to pick off this Nidus Canal and then get out as soon as they can. Oh my gosh, just storms raining down everywhere. And the Archons, but the Archons do go down. I mean, that, that was a pretty significant chunk. And these units are kind of stuck in here now that the uh, uh, Scourge are out. This is actually starting to get into a weird low econ game. And uh, I honestly, I don't, I don't know who's even at a lead anymore. Oh, losing that. Reaver is definitely not good for Shuttle. Shuttle is very low, and the bank for Hero is still pretty decent, but the supply is still very heavily in favor of the Protoss, and when you have a larger Protoss army in this late game situation, it's so much harder to actually get anything done. Lings are very good at getting lots of isolated kills if he can snipe a bunch of units that are stuck off to the side. Maybe he has some chance of actually getting back into this game. Another really good plague again this kind of looks like uh some people joking about the campaign earlier this looks a lot like the campaign where you just kind of run where they have defiers just randomly run up and kill things but not enough to to snipe the last observer and all of these lurkers will be going down this base is forfeit at this point in time more and more links floating over might be able to get on top of these units but i mean so much damage has been done and now that these units have this choke to work with Shuttle may have just done it. More units uh, just kind of camping outside this base, finally letting Shuttle down in there, but saying, you can't get out. The shuttle is mined out in all but one base right now. This is actually coming down to the wire. Both players just only mining from one base. Of course, this does favor the Protoss just a little bit. One base versus one base will always go in favor of the Protoss. And Zerg has a huge gas bank that they can't actually spend. The only really... Oh my god, so many drones going down. That might just be game. Cleaning this up with just lanes is, is bad. But I was going to say, the only real gassing that you, can, that you have as a Zerg player... Oh my god, this micro from Shuttle. They don't call him Shuttle for nothing. Oh my god. Absolutely insane Shuttle micro. Oh my god, this one Reaver just ending the game outright, and I think that is going to be it for a couple of Scourge are going to come out, going to start uh, annoying the shuttle, going to force it all the way back to its base, but that was a very, very good shuttle Reaver micro. 
going to be able to kill off a lot of things very early on. Slowly over time, it's possible for Shadow to break out of here with just pure storms, but it's going to take a while. Okay, does manage to actually get it, and the shuttle is safe. At this point, I think shuttle yeah, has made the game. A couple more lanes gonna, in here going to try to sign things, but and there's five Archons. No number of lanes in the entire world, except for like, I don't know, like 80. Could actually break that. That's, that's a ton of Archons. That is absolutely fantastic, and so many Archons out right now with nothing left for Hero. Well, Hero did actually manage to go back to mining. I'm surprised that uh, Shuttle didn't break out his, his army. He definitely had a small window of opportunity where he could have moved out and joined armies, but definitely playing it a little bit safe, wants to make sure he doesn't take too much damage. This is so many Archons, it's so scary right now. Another good play going to go down on top of this, but... Here come the storms. Going to be able to kill off the remaining uh, defiler that was over there. And now that these units are in full swing, you can finally join up both of those armies. And this is so devastating right now. Oh my gosh! So many archons coming in. A couple more. Um, of those lurkers gonna be able to hold this ground for a little bit longer and with the defilers there it's definitely possible to keep them alive for a bit longer but I mean at this point there's so many archons he's just gonna push through and kill everything oh my gosh absolute devastation even with the lings running in the back storms raining down everywhere archons destroying everything and this base is gonna go down yet again some reinforcements coming in for both players but I'm not sure that they can actually get anything done Hero is down to 40 supply. All of his supply is plummeting. No more mining right now. He's down to 30 supply. Oh my gosh, and more storms just all over everything. It doesn't even matter because Shuttle has done it. The Archon, the Zealot Archon, so cost effective. And Shuttle wins the race wars for Protoss. 4-3 versus Zerg. Well done by Shuttle. I told you he's a beast.